All right, Kale, thanks for doing this. The first edition of a Heat TV interview kind of during the quarantine period and doing it via Zoom. First of all, checking in with you, how's everything been so far? Just, I know really a big difference a month makes, but how have things been over the last couple of weeks? Well, they've been interesting for sure. And uh, it's something that we're all new to right now, but we've been trying our best as a family here to enjoy the time and uh, enjoy the California weather. You can't do much, but you can get outside and have a walk or maybe go for a bike ride with my daughter. So uh, I, you know, I think a lot of people are having tough times right now. Our times aren't that tough here. We're, we're healthy and uh, happy and the sun's out. So no issues, just trying to do our best to, you know, make good use of the time. Yeah. And I know, as you mentioned, your family's been really important to you. What's changed, I think, the most? Obviously, you're spending a lot more time with your daughter and your wife, but anything specifically that just stands out that you're like, oh my, this is something that I never get the time to do. Um, and it's maybe just a little bit different in your kind of daily uh, regimen now that you're not going to the rink every day. Well, thus far in my daily regimen, I'm, I've been, you know, just sort of taking it easy in the morning. And that's something different than we normally do as coaches. You're usually up and out of the bed before everyone else. And you may be gone from the house before anyone's up to eat yes. breakfast once in a while. And my daughter might be up early where I could sneak in a room and say hello. But these last couple of weeks, I've been, haven't been rushing things too much, been enjo really enjoying that, having her come in and jump on me some days are better than others if I didn't sleep as well and she's yeah. you know jumping on me early in the morning but it's fun to be able to just wake up with them and have breakfast with them and get to my other things that I want to accomplish later but just enjoy the fact that you know you're home with your family and you can do the things that you might do in more uh, normal job circumstances but in ours we're often on the road or we're up early to get in for meetings or we're you know, uh, getting ready for a game day. So it's fun to just sort of spend that early day time with them. Yeah. And now that we're in the early April, I think, you know, we're starting to get to a point where it's like, all right, this is not just a one or two week thing. Like we've almost been going at this whole quarantine process for almost a month. Do you find yourself, I'm sure to a big extent missing hockey, how much of hockey are you consuming? I'm sure there are different little things that the staff is doing to try and stay sharp um, with the potential return kind of looming, how do you, how much are you kind of engaging in uh, taking in hockey over the last couple of weeks? Uh, I think a fair amount, to be honest. There's moments in our day where uh, my daughter is working on her school and we're sort of, we have downtime and I, in the off season, like to consume a fair amount of NHL hockey that I don't get to take in over the course of the year. So there's two things really that I, I do. One is I use our video program and watch some games and break some games down. And sorry for the, for the little one sneaking up and down the stairs. We, but, we love uh, visitors. We love visitors. Uh, and so I sort of watch some games, some, you know, look at different teams and see if we can pick up on things that might help the heat in the future and uh, grow as a coach that way. And then the other thing that uh, we do, a fair amount is credit to the NHL CA in terms of their coaches association, creating a mentorship program where uh, they put on webinars, which you can jump in on or go back and watch. Okay. And they've done a fair amount of them. So that's good content to, to sit and listen to maybe Ken Hitchcock or Ralph Kruger, um, Bruce Cassidy, Jared Bednar. Those guys have all done some webinars that we can learn from and, so between those two things and the odd video conference with our staff, we basically just catch up and talk about things that we might have seen and see how each other's families are doing. And I think when you add it up, there's a fair amount of hockey consumption. That's one of those things where us coaches, we can step back, but we don't turn it off that well. Well, it's, it's hard to go from 100 to zero. So, And I know yeah. that uh, it's easy to just at least try and – it's so tough without games. Like you're so used to, I'm sure at the end of the day, like even when you're home and not at the rink, you're so used to just turning a game on and being able to take in hockey some way. I think that's been at least one of the bigger adjustments for me is that there's really no storylines or things that are developing outside of keeping tabs on, you know, the outside world and how everyone outside of the hockey world is being impacted uh, by COVID-19, yeah. which I know everyone is staying up to date on, but I guess on a little bit of a lighter note, any good TV shows, You've been binging or any books you've been reading? 
Uh, I haven't been binging a lot of TV shows, but I got to say the one that did start up for me was um, Westworld season three, and I'm a big okay. fan of that. So All right. I know it's a, it's a slow burn with that. It's not really the binge thing. You got to wait till your Sunday evening to get it, but I like it a lot. I, I find it a, to be a fascinating show, tough to figure out, and uh, I've been enjoying that. And uh, book wise, I get a you know, there's a few on the go that are coaching related, sort of dull there. But uh, I have one, um, and you know what? I can't remember the title of it right now, but it pertains to a uh, South African wildlife res- preserve where a um, gentleman sort of was not gifted or sort of saved a, a pot of elephants. And it just talks about the trials and tribulations of trying to tame wild elephants and the, you know, the landscape and everything that goes into that. It's really fascinating. So it's a good way to just sort of get away from the hockey side of things and every, all this stuff going on, learn a little bit about uh, wildlife in a different part of the world and how the human interacts with uh, elephants is pretty fascinating yeah. actually the way they, the elephants themselves interact. So one that um, sort of takes me away a little bit, which I like. Good stuff. I have to believe that you're in the minority of coaches that have jumped on that book, but I like it. So yeah, uh, I'm, I know I am. I know I am, but it's uh, it might be a keeper. I was telling the guys about it that maybe there's some secret form of communication that we can work exactly, on. Exactly. Exactly. You never know what's going to prove helpful to get two points uh, potentially <laughs> later in the season. So, exactly. um, and then exactly. for those that don't know, you're obviously you know, a pretty healthy guy as far as, you know, being able to eat what you want. And I know at times on the road, it can be difficult, but now you get to pretty much dictate what you're eating at all times. Has there been a go-to meal or something that you've maybe discovered in the kitchen over the last couple of weeks that's been a, uh, been a go-to? Well, there's the, our one go-to is uh, when it's waffle day, usually on the weekends, that's a fun right. day. And uh, we have some good waffles. And then uh, other ones, my wife does a really good job of cooking for us she does all the leg work I'm in there helping a little bit once in a while should should help more and learn more but she's done a good job of creating a good um, uh, diet for us and so sort of it's sort of built for this kind of a uh, situation there's a lot of beans involved a lot of lentils and things like that things that go a long way with uh, with being inside not being able to go to the store a lot our one of our favorites was last night we had a bowl with um, uh sweet potatoes and edamame and rice and uh she did a it was awesome my daughter and i loved it so it's fun it's a challenge now it's a challenge to get out to the store but everyone's going through the same thing you got to be smart with your food and uh make sure that you don't waste but you got to get out there and, and get some stuff once in a while and be careful when you're doing it yeah have you made any trips to the grocery store it's it's quite an experience i've been enough times to know that it, it's pretty uh, i don't know how to describe it you get the cast of characters in there for sure um and it's just yeah. a, you know a race to get toilet paper and different things so definitely and now we're you know we're at a point here in california where they're starting to recommend uh masks for everyone and so my uh wife was heading out today for a weekly thing we try to go once every week or week and a half and she had to get sort of suited up just to make sure, take care of each other and be safe. And so it's, uh, it's different times. Hopefully we don't live through this very often in our lives because it's certainly something that's really different and uh, learning a lot about, you know, ourselves being at home and a lot about our community too along the way. Yeah, well said, well said. A couple of, I guess, lighter notes before I let you go. I know you've been in pretty close communication with the staff and obviously some different, more vague conversations or team meetings, you could say, with the players. But who either, you know, from the coaching staff or a player, do you think is best suited for this quarantine life that you can just picture, you know, stocking up on the snacks and and binging a different TV show? Like, who on the team is most suited for this lifestyle? Uh, I'll I'll stick with the staff. I think a lot of these young guys, they, they come and they work hard at the rink. Don't get me wrong, but they do golf and they go out and golf, but they're pretty good at being home and binge watching. I think that's fair to say with the, with the younger generation, but, uh, certainly on our staff, one, one person that's well suited for it at the moment, unfortunately 
would be Joe Sorella because he's he's in his place and he is uh, on his own with his family back home. Uh, so and he's also a Netflix guy. So I think he's well suited to be able to get in, sit down, and and crunch through a good episode of Ozarks or you know he used to love the um, I can't remember what it's called Peaky Blinders. That that was oh yeah okay yeah all year. And, and we chat about different shows. He's always recommending things. So um, certainly he's set up for it. Some of our other staff members aren't set up as well for it when it comes to their, you know, uh, Thomas Spear having his young kids like that. That'd be a yeah. tough go, being yeah. inside with some sure. young kids for all sure. the time. And then I guess just lastly, in terms of, we mentioned kind of your diet and your regimen. Like, what are you doing to stay busy? Like, are you, you got a workout set up there? Are you going for runs? Like, I know you're always chomping at the bit around the rink to try and get moving uh, when you get a chance. And I know you're not, you're not used to not being able to take advantage of the facilities at the rink. So how's that been? Yeah, it's, it's been different, but I, you know, we, we joke a little bit, my wife and I, about um, our, you know, with our current situation, it's not, hugely different from the off season off season you usually stick pretty close to your home try to take care of yourself uh do your hockey work and and uh, spend the other time with your family so what i do is we have a small little gym set up and uh try to get a bit of a workout each day in we do go for nice walks and um you know the uh, bike ride or, or things like that sort of to some open space and play around with my daughter so those get us outside uh, we've got a backyard area where we can get outside, swing on the hammock a bit. Um, I'm a I'm a very very novice uh, guitar player, and that's come a little ways over like the last it. couple of weeks. I like it. I like it. Yeah. So that's that's been a a big um, hobby that I've been able to sort of pick back up, and I like that. So between and you know watching some hockey and spending some time with them, and getting out for walks, we usually stay fairly active. And uh, you can tell, though, as you probably know, you can tell when you're not active enough over a one or two or three day period, you start to not feel great and, and it, isn't, it isn't good for you. So we try to keep moving as much as we can. Yeah, it's almost a mental thing as much as it is a physical thing. But um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for and sure. Now that you've let me know that you're working on the guitar skills, I'll be expecting at least a song or two when we get back to the rink. We're going we're gonna to have to be isolated for a long time before that happens. <laughs> good stuff i can play hey i can play the beginning of a lot of songs though if you if you only have a 10 second uh, 10 seconds hey that'll do that'll do um awesome well good stuff kale appreciate you jumping on here and uh you know hopefully you can enjoy some family time and hopefully we can get back to the rink here shortly so thanks again for doing this and uh stay safe and stay healthy all right thanks very much chris and i think my daughter might be done her stair workout for the day so that's good hey, getting and the then, steps uh, in ashen how are you great <laughs> awesome. Good stuff, Kale. Good to see you guys. Stay All right, safe. Thanks. Stay healthy. Take care. Awesome.